particular understanding of multicultural civil society. Aside from the realm of public schools, which is my focus for today, parks, libraries, religious institutions, community organizations, even local grocery stores provide the common and richly textured spaces for democratic engagement and easing in the transition of the immigrant and refugee experience. For many marginal groups, it is uh, often this collective effort of placemaking, uh, where reciprocity and trust, alliances and creative networks, not just formally planned, but also organically evolving, that indicate that immigrants and refugees are not just passive recipients, but also active and central agents <coughs> of the process of city building itself. I'm not dismissing sort of not the broader implications of concentrated poverty, exclusion from the housing market, discrimination, oppression and isolation, but noting that despite these many barriers, I want to demonstrate that paradoxical spaces emerge in different communities of schools that redefine the meaning of integration that are locally contingent. Schools as public institutional spaces provide the opportunity for contact and integration for diverse groups and are a fertile ground to explore the nuances of everyday multiculturalism. I'd like to present in, in the next few minutes um, um, a very different landscape of integration as imagined and practiced by the citizenry of Toronto. That is through the lens of multilingualism, social discrimination, among other forces, that push people to live in a certain area. Those groups have no choice to live there. On the other side, that's why I will be talking about the Portugal in a few seconds, you have internal factors to the group that encourage the group to live there in order to retain culture, tradition, uh, and identity, as Daniel mentioned. The Portuguese in Toronto, they built an institutionally complete community, a quite visible community, just facing the elite Italy on the north. And, uh, uh, and different reasons have contributed to that. Uh, strong social networks, they are housing preferences when they arrived in Toronto, housing market was relatively cheap, and so on. This being said, let's go to the next slide where I want to emphasize the issue, it's not very good, where, where I want to emphasize the issue of language. Uh, the black Africans have not been studied uh, in this country, and I say, let's see to what extent, first of all, I was interested